Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to break the two terabyte limit for a partition or a drive on any 32-bit operating system. So to show you that I'm actually doing it on a 32-bit operating system, I actually have it on system properties. I'm actually running Microsoft Windows XP Pro. Um, it is running Service Pack 3. I do have it fully updated. I do happen to be running an ASUS Formula 5 board and I'm running the AMD 8150 8-core processor in it, which I do have overclocked right now and has been overclocked to 4.21 gigahertz. Um, because it is 30, I do have 8 gigs of RAM in it, but because it is 32-bit, it's only seeing 3.2 gigabytes of RAM. But it runs awesome. Okay, here's the problem that everybody's running into. So what they're doing is they're using, I happen to have a Rocket RAID high point, 2310 RAID controller. And what you're doing is you're coming in here using the, the management console from Windows and you're creating a RAID system whether it's a Stripe system or a RAID 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a RAID 5. I actually have four 3 terabyte hard drives in here which in RAID 5 will give me 9 terabytes and after it's formatted it will give me a little bit over 8 terabytes of, of usable data space. So I'm going to create this. I'm going to actually have to change the method to background so I can actually show you. You always want to do it in foreground um, if it's possible for you to change the advanced settings I'm going to show you here in a few minutes. Okay, so we'll go to next here. I'm going to select all four drives. I can do it with three. You can do RAID 5 with three drives. that has been started. Now because it is initializing in the background, this can take between 45 to 60 hours with this much data. Um, you have to give it, there is a time down there, it does say it's going to take 24 hours right now, but give it about 4 or 5 minutes and it will get up to about how long it's roughly going to take. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in here to my computer, go to manage, and get into the disk management. I'm going to cancel that. And here's what you guys are running into. If you look here, over at disk 2, right over here, you got a little over 2,000 gigs, basically 2 terabytes. So I'm going to show you how to break that limit without having to do anything special. I've heard people using uh, command prompt to do things like GPT drives and just there's no need for that. I happen to be running a Rocket Raid card. I like Rocket Raid. I don't have any problems with it. I do. I can tell you one thing: if you are running a low profile on like you, you basically need hard, good hard drives, decent hard drives, and you need decent power supply. If you have a cheap power supply and you're trying to power hard drive and you're having hard drive pr problems, get a decent power supply and make sure it's a single ra 12 volt rail power supply. Do not buy multiple rail power supplies. Okay, as you can see it's already gotten up to 54 hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stop this so I can show you the proper way to do it. And then I'm going to delete this. I'm going to close it, and now I'm going to restart my computer. And what I'm going to actually do now is I'm actually going to go into the BIOS, when the BIOS gets to um, the controller's configuration screen, I'm actually going to log into that. where I can get to some uh, one of the advanced settings that I need to do from this card, which I can't do from the Windows Management Control.
I had to start over because I forgot to press Control H here. So to get into my controller, I have to press Control H. And this is the same for just for any rocket uh, raid control. So as you can see on my screen here, I have four three terabyte drives. These are um, SATA three drives, but they're running in SATA two mode because it is a SATA two card. So what I'm gonna do now, so I'm gonna create, go down to RAID 5, striping with rotating parity. And then I'm gonna select all four drives. Okay, now here's the part you need to change, it's the sector size. What does this mean? Basically, because it's a 32-bit operating system, default is 512 bits. That gives you your 2 terabyte limit. If you change it to 1K, it'll give you 4 terabyte limit. If you change it to 2K, it'll give you an 8 terabyte limit. And if you change it to 4K, it'll give you a 16 terabyte limit without having to do anything special to your windows or using command prompt or anything. Since I do have 4 3 terabyte drives for 12 terabytes, I'm going to change mine to 4K. I'm going to ignore the warning. I've done this several times and I know it works. Okay, now I'm going to go down to create. I have to do a background initialization. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put back into Windows. While it's booting, it will tell you that if you do have the FX8150 chip and you are going to overclock it, I do happen to have a really good um, sealed water cooling system. So you just want to make sure that you have a decent cooling system if you're going to attempt to overclock it. My room temperature right now is right around 64, 65 degrees. And with it overclocked like that and my cooling system running full power, it runs right around 100 to 105 degrees. Under full load, um, it will, I mean, 100% non-stop for a while, it gets up right up to around 140 to 150 degrees, depending on room temperature. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log into my controller here. You can see right here, you zoom in here. Nine terabytes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my computer here, click on manage. I'll bring it down to where you can see it, of course. So I want to click on disk management and ignore, just hit cancel on the conversion. And then as you can see here, disk 5, unknown. 8,383 gigabytes, which is eight, a little over 8 terabytes, uninitialized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and initialize it, show you that it's actually got that. I'm going to do a new partition. So it takes a few seconds. Dry letter M. Storage. I have another one in here named Storage One, which is 
uh, for two terabyte drives. I've been using it that way for about a year and a half, to almost now. Let me name this one O2. I do a quick format here. It's pretty much the initialization does the format anyway. Finish. It's formatting, it's quick format. As soon as it gets done, it's a lot of data for it to format. It's not done yet. Let's see if it will let me see the properties. It won't let me see the properties. It might not let me actually um, do that until it's done initializing. So, there you have it. You, that's all you gotta do. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you have any comments, leave a comment. And thank you for watching my video.